Well, I grew up in a small town uh, outside of two hours north of New York City called Poughkeepsie. Um, grew up on a farm, basically. Uh, and then when I turned 18, moved to New York City and then never left. So I've been in New York City for the last 20, 20 years. What I most love about my job is the personal one-on-one -on -one interactions that occur throughout the day and the relationships that develop and uh, with your patients. Um, and this doctor-patient relationship can have a tremendous therapeutic effect. It's really part of the the um, process of people getting well is not just going to get sort of robotic sort of advice from a doctor or instructions from a doctor, but really developing a relationship where you understand the person and understand where they're coming from. And it, it has a tremendous impact on on how likely they are to get better with whatever problem they have. And I've always seen this in my own practice that you may get a new patient who has a lot of problems and may have been jumping around from one doctor to another or one specialist to another and then they, they, they have not been getting better and you can't fix everything on that initial visit. But you can start to develop a relationship and once that patient starts to have some trust and some confidence, everything starts to change. And there actually was a recent study that was looking at this. They were looking at the component of the placebo effect, which is the effect that people get better when they believe they're going to get better. And a huge part of that, it turns out, has to be with having a therapeutic relationship with your doctor. So basically, if you have a doctor you don't trust, gives you the same medicine as a doctor who you do trust, the patient who takes the medicine from the doctor they trust is actually going to do better than the one who takes a medicine from someone who they have no relationship with, is what this study showed, and that's also what I see in my own practice. So I should have known that I would have gone down the path of becoming a medical doctor, considering that my grandmother on my mother's side was one of the first female doctors in this country. She went to the uh, University of Michigan and she was the, the first female to be admitted into their medical school. I guess my hobby, as they would say, is uh, I dance tango, um, which is the, um, a dance from Argentina. And uh, my husband is Argentinian, and, but he does not dance tango. Uh, <laughs> it was a really long road, actually, to becoming a doctor. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't one of those things that I really thought much about when I was a kid. But um, I, I wanted to study literature or philosophy. But then in college, I discovered that uh, I wasn't very good at that, and I was really good at the sciences. I thought about becoming a school teacher, but they sent me into the classroom, and it gave me such a splitting headache to be in the classroom that I decided to become a doctor instead because it would be much easier than becoming a teacher. Uh, <laughs> it was an easier path. So I, I eventually I got into um, neuroscience and I was going to do a PhD in neuroscience. Um, but uh, um, I then switched to do an MD-PhD, which is a combined medical degree and a PhD, focusing on neuroscience. Um, but when I, um, so I had experience working in the lab with, you know, doing routine lab work. Um, and then, but I also through medical school had the experience of working with people and the working with the people was much more satisfying than working in a lab. Um, so then I changed to become a straight medical doctor and, um, and that's how it all came about. The typical scenario is I have the husband and wife team that comes in and I often see them together and they often want to come together and it's great because I usually get all the information on the husband from the wife and or vice versa. <laughs> or vice versa. <laughs> yes, and it's very it's it's really actually great when you take care of a family because there can be 
um, instances where you don't understand what's going on with a patient. I, I had a patient recently who looked terrible to me and I couldn't understand why. She seemed very depressed and she had never been like that and I didn't understand why. You know, a couple weeks later I was seeing her daughter for her own daughter's medical problems who informed me that her sister had just died suddenly. And then, of course, then I understood what's going on. So you, you, you learn more about the patient when you're actually taking care of the whole family. It's enjoyable to practice medicine when you're within a system that functions well. It's very frustrating to, I have worked quite a bit in inner city um, situations where you may feel you're a good doctor, but you're in a, working in a system that um, is disorganized and frustrating for patients. And so um, I think it's really nice to be able to work in a system that is, um, that does well for the patient.